right, so anyway, Revelation chapter number one. Revelation chapter number one. I saw a funny meme not too long ago that said adulthood is, is saying it's going to get slow after next week for the rest of your life. And uh, I think there's some truth to that. Uh, it seems like we're always, oh, no, no, it's, this week's busy, but next week's not going to be that bad. And then that next week ends up really busy. And uh, when I surrendered this last summer to going full-time full -time in, in pastoring, I, in my back of my mind, I was thinking, man, I'm going to have so much more time to relax and to have fun, and, and that's not the case. It's <laughs> just as busy, if not worse, uh, than, than when I was working, working secular uh, outside, which is good. Not, not bad. That's not bad. Just saying. It is busy. Amen. Life is just busy. Revelation chapter 1, and uh, starting in verse number 4, once you find your place there, go ahead and stand with me. Let's honor the Word of God together today. Revelation chapter 1, and uh, starting in verse number 4. The Bible says, John, the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this portion of your word and how exciting it is as we read and consider uh, the truths that we, we looked at last week out of this passage of Scripture and the truths that we'll be able to see this week out of this passage of Scripture and also enjoy a confidence that we can probably look at it again and draw even more for your Scripture is inexhaustible. Thank you, God, for uh, the, the, uh, this book. Thank you for this time to study. And Father, I pray that you give me a clarity of mind, a clarity of speech. Please help me not to cough during the service um, so that I can, so that I can uh, not pause or no, no distractions from your, uh, from your word. And uh, Father, we just want to thank you in advance for all that you're going to do. Uh, we ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. So if you remember, last week we were in these verses last week. We started in verse number four and we concluded... Uh, down there in uh, verse number six, uh, in verse number six, and uh, in those verses we, we covered a few different points, a few different thoughts there, and uh, it was it was a blessing, amen. And we entitled it uh, we entitled it a timeless letter, and we were looking at those verses, lots of good stuff there. But we weren't able to finish all of those verses last week, and so we're coming back and kind of adding to the outline from last week a fourth point. The first point, if you remember from last week, we talked about a special people. And who would have thought, I think we get into Revelation, we're waiting for some of the, some of the, we're looking into some of the, waiting for some of the, you know, prophecy or something to blow our mind. But I, I don't know, my mind is blown right at the beginning of the study. Amen. Just a reminder of what we enjoy in Christ ought to blow our mind. Amen. It ought to put us in awe. It ought to, ought to uh, promote a, uh, an attitude of, of thanksgiving. Amen. An overwhelming attitude of thanksgiving, especially as we considered last week uh, that this, this is wrote to a special people. Amen. Uh, it is for us to consider. This is uh, these, especially as we're looking at the uh, these first three chapters, uh, there's, a, there's a, a lot of significance even for us that are wrote to Seven literal churches back then. Uh, they were wrote to in a in, in, as that word seven is a number of completion. They were wrote to all of the churches back then. Uh, they were wrote, I believe, to all of the churches throughout all of church history. I believe you can find uh, you can find application for each local church that's ever existed. I believe that you can find uh, uh, types in those. I, I, I believe that throughout the ages you can always find uh, a a. Uh, 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 a Laodicean church, probably through every single uh, year that uh, that the, that the uh, churches have, have been going on. Uh, but then also, I believe that you can find 
uh, application for today. All churches can find some application for today. I believe you can find, you can see seven, those seven different church distinctions in amongst churches today. And, uh, and I believe that it is for all of the churches today. So it's a, I, I hope everything what I just said there, uh, I think we, we, we call that when we watch uh, some of our public figures speak, we call that a word salad. Uh, what I just said there, all of that, all of that is said to say uh, that the, this is to a special people. Amen. What a blessing to consider. Uh, dear brother, dear sister in Christ, you and I are part of that special people. Amen. This is, this is for us. Amen. God has given us some in, in instruction, some information. I believe that there will be some that look at this in the, the tribulation period and will gain some instruction on what to do while they're, while they're waiting and, when, and while they're in that. But I believe the primary, uh, primary need of this letter is so that you and I can look at this, we can see what is to come, and it will break our heart, burden our heart for the lost, realizing that there is an urgency to get the gospel to a lost and dying people because someday Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 is going to come to pass and I believe that's a type picture of the rapture uh, that trumpet's going to sound we're checking out of here that means the Holy Spirit's coming with us amen he's the one that indwells us uh, and the, it'll make ready for the Antichrist and the seven years of tribulation so special people a sovereign power we saw last week, a sovereign power. We see that right in those verses, in verses, the last part of verse 4, first part of verse 5. Uh, the Bible mentions God the Father, mentions God the Holy Spirit, and also mentions God the Son. Amen. So we see the Trinity right there, uh, and uh, that, that, that sovereign power. And then we also saw a special praise last week. We talked about His compassion. And aren't you glad that He loves us? Amen. Amen. Right. And we sing songs like like Sister Jen sang there about Beulah Land. You know, we, we sing that because we know He loves us. Amen. We, he, he, he prepared a place for us because He loved us. He, he died in our place because He loved us. He's, he's proven His love to us over and over again. We see His compassion. I'm thankful for His compassion. We saw His cleansing. Amen. I'm glad I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And uh, I'm thankful that I've, that I've been to that cleansing. And uh, there's, a, there's a song out there, uh, been to the river, been baptized, uh, been washed by the... Uh, that's so unbiblical. Amen. That, why, that river that didn't do nothing for my eternal life. Amen. Uh, I've been to the blood of the Lamb. That's washed my sin away. Amen. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for His cleansing. And then we saw His confirmation. You know, every believer is not only pardoned, but there's potential for promotion for those that serve the Lord well during this time. I, do, I, I, mean, I might not be able to fully explain that. I don't think any of us can fully fathom or fully understand exactly what our roles will be in that millennial reign. But God has something for us to do. Amen. And, and uh, that's exciting. Not only later on, but God's got something for us to do right now. Amen. God, is, God has confirmed us. God, is you, God will use us. And uh, that ought to bring a joy to your heart. So as we continue in this passage of Scripture with the enabling of the Lord uh, and, uh, and, and His guidance through these precious words, we'll continue to look at these verses considering this fourth point. If you're taking notes, you got to go back. If you forgot your notes from last week, then you'll have to add these later. I'm sorry I didn't give you a, uh, a fair warning on that. But this will be point number four from last week's message, A Secure Promise. A secure promise. It's a one-point message tonight, Brother Lord. Amen. Yeah, there we go. I, I, I just got one amen out of tonight. Amen. Uh, a secure promise. Look at verse 7 and 8. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail before him, or because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Amen. All wonderful promises that we find in Scripture. I love, if you, you, I don't believe you can, you can exhaust them all in a lifetime. I don't think you can, you can get your full of them in a lifetime. But you think about all of the wonderful promises we find in the Word of God for you and for me uh, as, as believers as those that are of the faith, those that are in Christ. Uh, I mean, it just, it, it seems like, I mean, that's, that's one of the things I've been doing for the last 10 years, is preaching those promises, amen, and, and getting excited about those promises and sharing those promises with you. And, uh, and I'm so thankful for the wonderful promises that we find recorded in the Word of God. I love Psalm in chapter number 40, uh, verse number 5. Uh, the, the, these, these words are, are wonderful. It says, Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. 
If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Amen? Uh, his thoughts towards us, his works for us, his promises. I just don't know if we could, I've heard somebody you know, try to put a number on the promises in the Bible, and that's just a... That is just a number placed upon uh, what they found. I, I'm just I'm convinced that there's even more. There's even more blessings in the Word of God than even being able to put a number on specific promises. But oh, what a blessing to think about the promises of God. Peter spoke of God's promises. He said, "Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious." promises. Amen. And I think that you testify with me on this as we do on Sunday nights as we're praising the Lord. We're rejoicing about uh, the surety of God's promises in our Christian life and all the things I think that all the things we praise the Lord about on a Sunday night, we can probably take those back to a fulfillment of one of God's promises. Amen. I personally experienced the fulfillment of His promises in my life. Amen. And, uh, and I'm very thankful for that. I'm thankful for His provision. Uh, I'm thankful for that mercy that renews every day. Uh, I'm thankful that when I that when I mess up or when I slide back, that uh, the Holy Spirit of God convicts me and corrects me uh, and gets me back on track. I'm thankful for that. I might not enjoy it in the moment, uh, but I'm thankful for the conviction of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And in, in verses 7 and 8, we find one of the greatest promises in the book, and that is the return of our blessed Lord. Amen. A great promise in the Bible is uh, the wonderful truth that our Savior is coming again someday. It's important, I think, that we differentiate between the rapture and his second coming. We did this on, on Wednesday. It's kind of, I did not play it this way. God did. Amen. But on Wednesday, we are in. We are uh, uh, looking at the Olivet Discourse in the book of Mark. And uh, there's a lot of, of convergence between the scriptures uh, in our Wednesday study and our Sunday night study. Uh, as we're looking at uh, the, the, the um, uh, Olivet Discourse has a lot to do with the second coming of Christ. And, of course, the book of Revelation has a lot to do with the second coming of Christ. And uh, so they're kind of converging thoughts there and uh, passages of Scripture that support each other uh, that we've been looking at on Wednesdays and now here on Sunday nights. And so if some of this stuff is repetitive. It's not because necessarily I said it last week on Sunday. It's probably because I said it on Wednesday during our Mark study. Amen. Uh, but it's important that we, we understand the difference between these events. And, and, uh, and uh, I, I like what Dr. Sorensen said about this verse. Uh, his commentary said, the return of Jesus, uh, the return of Jesus Christ is clearly set forth. That return is in two phases. One, the rapture of the church, and two, his return in power and great glory. The latter is evidently uh, that which is in view here. When Jesus comes in the rapture, though it will be in the clouds, apparently not every eye shall or will see him. However, when he returns in power and great glory, the nations of the earth will see him. As recorded in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 and 19. We won't go there right now. Uh, moreover, in Matthew chapter 24, verses 27 through 30, he is noted as coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So uh, the text or the next event in God's future program is the rapture of the church. We live in a time of, the, of, of, of what we say the imminent return of Jesus Christ. He can come at any moment. There's nothing that he's waiting on. There, whatever his timetable is, whatever God's timetable is, uh, it's a perfect timetable. Amen? Uh, it's, uh, we might not be able to fully understand it. Uh, we don't try to number it uh, because that, uh, that would be uh, uh, vain and futile. But uh, God in his perfect timing is going to sound that trumpet and, and we will be raptured out of here. The local church, the churches will be raptured out of here. Believers saved, the redeemed, will be that completed church and we will all be raptured out of here. After the rapture, the period known as the Great Tribulation will begin. Uh, and uh, We don't know how much time in between the rapture and tribulation. We don't understand that. Uh, we understand there will have to be a peace set up with the Middle East or with, the, with Israel. And we don't know if that stage is fully set for that. We don't know if there's a, a, a significant amount of time in between the rapture and the start of the tribulation. But there will be... the. It, that is the, the, that's how the event uh, cycle uh, uh, system goes there. It would be the rapture, then the seven-year tribulation. Christ will come in power uh, after the tribulation and uh, will defeat the enemies of God and establish his kingdom. We talked about that on, on, uh, uh, on, uh, Wednesday, or on, yeah, on Wednesday. And, uh, man, I, I don't know. I, I'm a, I, maybe I got excited for you, uh, but I was, I was getting excited when I think about us riding in on those horses. Amen? And uh, God's people, all the believers... Uh, well, someday we're all going to come in on horses behind the Savior uh, for that great battle. And listen, we're not going to have to lift a finger. Amen. Jesus, by his spoken word, 
is going to completely annihilate all of his enemies. Amen? I, and we're going to be, we're, we're going to have front row seats to it. Amen? Front horses seats to it. Amen? And uh, what a blessing when we think about that. I am persuaded, though, that as we look at these verses, we're going up verse by verse study in the book of Revelation. I'm confident that these verses are dealing uh, with his second coming to establish his kingdom. And uh, Jesus spoke of this here, Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. It says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Amen? And uh, so as we're, we're, we're thinking about this, sec this secure, uh, excuse me, this secure promise here, uh, we think about a few of the blessed truths about this return of Jesus. I didn't say anything about sub points, Brother Mark. Uh, we see that first part of verse number seven. We see his return. We're talking about the secure, the secure promise. We see his return is sure. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Amen. And Jesus came that first time as that humble babe in a manger. Uh, amen. He laid aside his glory. He took off that robe of flesh in order, or I'm sorry, put on that robe of, took up, put on that robe of flesh in order to offer himself as the only acceptable sacrifice for the sins of men. And uh, the prophets of, the, of old, they had uh, preached the coming of Messiah. And although most of the world never uh, acknowledged, they did not accept Christ uh, in, in, as, uh, as the Messiah, it still remains truth, it still remains fact that Jesus is Messiah. Messiah did come, that was fulfilled, uh, that promise was fulfilled in Jesus, amen, God's only begotten Son, He completely fulfilled the work uh, that was required of the Father, He was crucified, uh, he, was, he was buried in that borrowed tomb, He was raised on that third glorious morning, amen, and ascended and is at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us as I preach this message tonight. And just as in his day, uh, there are those who, who doubt the coming of Christ. There are those that say, no, all of that never happened. Uh, we weren't there. I didn't see it. I don't believe it. And none of that stuff that you're talking about will happen. Uh, but the Bible is clear about his return. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Uh, the word behold, think about this, has the idea of looking and gazing at a wonderful discovery. Amen. Amen. Uh, at, at an unexpected surprise. And those who doubt, uh, those who deny that he will return someday, uh, they, will they will discover that he has kept his word. Amen. He will return. I believe that the reference to the clouds refer to the cloud of to the glory uh, that will surround Jesus. This is not an uh, unfamiliar topic or subject. When we think about clouds uh, of glory, uh, we know that the clouds of glory in the Old Testament, Shekinah glory, the glory of God, it was that pillar of the cloud that God's, uh, God's uh, glory uh, led the Israelites uh, in the desert. It was a cloud of glory that covered the mercy seat in the Holy of Holies. Uh, Acts chapter 1, uh, verses 9, 10, and 11, the Bible says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you unto heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go. Uh, into heaven. And then Acts chapter 1 and uh, verse 9 reveals that he ascended back to the Father in the clouds. Amen. I believe that has a lot has reference to do with that Shekinah glory. I believe that has to do with his glory. Amen. He will return again in power and in great glory. His return, uh, his return is sure. Uh, his return will be seen. That first, second part of verse 7. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. You say, <clears throat> Pastor, what in the world does that, what does that mean exactly? You say, does that, is, what does that literally mean? What's the, what is the lit literal interpretation of this? Well, it's I, I, very simple. Every eye. Mm -hmm. Amen. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl on the face of this earth. We might not be able to wrap our brains around it. Uh, maybe that's where the flat earthers get their uh, theories from. It's a joke. <laughs> but in God's omnipotence, when He comes, every eye, every eye, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl on the face of this earth will behold Him as the King of Kings, will behold the King 
as he returns. Hey, Jesus won't need CNN. Jesus won't need Fox News. Uh, won't need MSNBC uh, to provide any sort of breaking news. The world will see him as he is. And the reason I put that in there is because some theologians will say, well, it's because of the, uh, the you know, how the, the speed of light and, and uh, you know, it'll be broadcasted so quickly. I don't think God needs to, de to, uh, to depend upon modern day technology to, to show uh, his entrance into this world as the king of glory. Uh, he's not going to need a breaking news segment. He's not going to need the airwaves cleared up for him. Amen. I believe, I might not be able to understand it, but I believe every eye shall see it. Can you imagine the excitement there for just a minute? Now listen, when we're gone. We're gone. At this point, we're gone. Okay? Can you imagine, though, the excitement and the chaos? We talked about this on Wednesday. Right? Uh, the, 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 be, the be chaos. There's excitement. Well, this is at the end of tribulation. Those that are those that are saved, that have made it to the end of the tribulation. I was just listening to something uh, yesterday uh, uh, from the book of Revelation, and uh, uh, there was like an over overview of the whole book. It was kind of like just a one sermon overview of the whole book. Ha half of the population will be dead. Dead. And we're talking. That's four billion people. Or we at eight, eight something billion right now, I think, or something like that. Four billion people dead by the end of the seven years tribulation. Yeah. So you imagine the excitement with those that are, are trusting Christ as Savior. They've seen what the Bible says about His sure return. Hey Amen. And they see Him. Can you imagine? I mean, we're, we're excited about the rapture, but we haven't been through near the same amount of things that the Christians that get saved in the tribulation time have went through before the Lord returns. And we get excited about it with just the little persecution we deal with. You can imagine the excitement, imagine the chaos that this event will create, but also, as we talked about on Wednesday, uh, imagine the amount of sadness in this event. You know, it's, it's crazy for me, we talked about this the last time we went through the book of Revelation, but all through, and I can't give you an address right off the top of my brain, um, but you remember, we, we, when we were going through this, there's portions through here, we're, we're going to find that even after everything they've seen through the tribulation, there are going to be those that reject Christ on purpose. Right. They've been given the opportunity again to trust Christ as Savior. They're going to be preached the gospel clearly, plainly. And even after all they've seen, all the crazy stuff of Revelation, they'll still say no. But then the Savior's going to show up. You imagine not only is there going to be a lot of excitement, but there is going to be a measure of sadness in that event. Now don't get me wrong, I'm joyful about the defeat of Satan and sin and the world system, but there is a grim reminder in this text. Those that pierced him will see him. And everyone who rejected Jesus at his first coming will look upon the King of glory. The last time they saw him, he hung there on that Roman cross. Uh, he was stripped of his clothes. He was humiliated. Uh, he, was, he, uh, he was, as we talked about this morning, uh, as that sheep dumb to the slaughter, didn't didn't uh, ridicule, uh, didn't didn't uh, strike back. Uh, in, in fact, de demonstrated grace and demonstrated a desire for forgiveness, uh, even for those that hung on that cross. Oh, but this time they'll see him in his royal robe. Amen. They'll see him as King of Glory. They'll see him as that King of Kings and that Lord of Lords. Hey, the man whom they wrongly accused. The one they crucified and had hung on that cruel cross will then now be there to pass judgment upon them and their wickedness. And the feet that were nailed to the tree will now be as fine brass going forth into judgment. Amen. He's not going to come back as a sacrificial lamb with the Lion of Judah. Amen. He won't be mocked. He won't be beaten. He will be standing in all power. We see that lack continuing on in verse number seven. We see his return will also be sorrowful. Listen, we like I said, we talked about this Wednesday. Sorry for all the overlap, but that's just how the Lord works. We needed the reminder, I suppose. But the, his reminder will create a time of great sorrow for the people of the earth. Listen, all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Amen. What a, what a picture that's painted there for us. Think about that. All kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. This literally has to do with them beating on their breasts in grief. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking just, just some of the, uh, the, the you know, nightmares that we thankfully can wake up out of. I mean, this is, this is something they can't, they can't get out of. It's, 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 it's too late. Amen? And they, real, they, will, they will have realized in this instant that their rejection now 
has secured their eternity. They, they, they've heard the gospel. They've rejected it for the last time. The door of salvation, just like, just like the door was shut in the day of Noah, the door of salvation will be shut. There will be, there will be an overwhelming sensation of doom and great sorrow. The reality of their lost con condition will hit them at once. They will suddenly be faced with the reality of eternity without Christ. Amen. I, I know that we, the scripture don't say anything about this, but I wonder what the men's reaction were in Noah's day when the rain began to fall. Amen. I, you, you, it, it's really it's all left to, to speculation and, and imagination, right? Because we're, we we're not told we know they died, right? We don't. We're not told about their behavior. We're not told. Uh, you know, we're not told about. But I wonder how, how many of them were banging on the ark. Uh, I mean, I, that's what I would do. I guess I'm just trying to put myself in their shoes. I suppose I would have been probably running, asking for that one last chance of banging in the ark, begging to get in. And, and that's kind of the attitude, the mentality here, as they're beating upon the, their their chest, as they're wailing, uh, and this 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 horrible this horrible cry, this horrible wail. Everything that they have rejected has now come to pass, and now it is too late to accept the grace of God. This ought to challenge us to warn everybody we can. You know, there are going to be people who will reject unto eternal damnation. But listen, there are so many people out there that would receive Christ if those who were responsible for getting the message to them would do their part, obey, and share the message of the gospel with the lost. I mean, I understand there's a balance between our moral responsibility and God's sovereignty, but I do believe that there, I, I believe we'll, we'll find this out later on someday. But we're, there, there, there will be there, there will be those that step into that lake of fire that we could have reached, that would have listened, that would have accepted, but we dropped that ball. Mm -hmm. I know the Calvinists don't believe that way, but I, I believe that's I believe that's what the Bible teaches us. I believe we see an example of that in Ezekiel when it's talking about the watchman and the watchtower. <laughs> and I, I, that's talking about the physical safety of Israel, but I think there's a great application for us in New Testament Christianity for that as well. I believe that there'll be blood on our hands, many of ours, and mine. Listen, it may, it may be not yours, but I'm sure there will be on mine of missed opportunities that would have accepted Christ, but I got too busy. It wasn't that important. I didn't sense the urgency. We see the words, even so, amen. Amen? This, this will be a day of great sorrow, but it will come to pass. Even so, amen? It's within God's divine plan. My prayer is that we uh, that uh, we would make sure that we're ready and make sure that we see as many people ready as possible. Fourthly, and in verse number eight, we see his rapture will be secure. His return, I'm sorry. His return will be secure. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was is to come, the Almighty. Amen. I think this is, this is i got a smile on my face. It's just a blessing. Right? When we, if we consider what we've, what we've read in earlier verses, and now we come to this verse number 8 here. Amen. It's a, it's a blessing to understand the divine nature of the Lord. Amen. He is God. I mean, he's, there's nobody else like Him. There is no being like Him. He is God. There is no other. He's Almighty God. He doesn't seek the approval or the acceptance of others concerning his will. You say, well, that's just not fair. He's God. <laughs> Amen. His plan's always perfect. The kings and the kingdoms of this world, they have no power to prevent his, his return to judgment. Amen. They will, they will enjoy their one world order for a moment, but only because God's allowing it as part of his judgment for sin. He is Alpha and Omega. And in the English language, we could say he's the A and the Z and everything in between. He's the first and the last. Amen. He's the beginning and the ending. He which is and was and is to come. Verse number 8 is a, this, this, this blessing here. Jesus gives himself the same description that the Father holds in verse number 4, speaking of his equality with God the Father. Amen. Just another picture of the Trinity and the Godhead. He who created the world. He who had, who had, who had placed the, the universe uh, will conclude it according to his perfect will. Jesus, our returning Lord, is in complete control. 
He's in full, he has full authority. He is the sovereign God. He is the Almighty. Amen. When we think about, when we consider the divine attributes of Jesus, it is easy for us to see, it's easy for us to gain and enjoy a wonderful confidence that his return is secure. Yeah. Nothing's going to change that return. Nothing can alter that return. Satan can try all he wants to, but he cannot change that return. There's not a single thing that the powers and the principalities of this world can do. All the forces of hell, they can do nothing to prevent his coming. It's secure. The prince of this wicked world will then face defeat. Of course, he'll be chained up for a thousand years, let back out for a moment. And then in chapter number 20, praise the Lord, him, the uh, Antichrist, the false prophet, will all be cast in that lake of fire along with everybody else who is not found written in the Lion's Book of Life. The prince of this world, the prince of this wicked world, will face a final defeat, and there is absolutely nothing he can do. You say, how, how do you believe that? How do you know that? Start at Genesis. And work your way to present day. And every time the devil tried to mess things up, he never could. In all through scripture, we find he was trying to attack the bloodline. He even thought he was winning by putting Jesus on the cross. Little did he know it was actually his defeat that he was securing as Jesus hung there on that tree. All throughout the book, we find God, his sovereignty, cannot be stopped. It's secure. His coming is secure. Let me close tonight. Uh, what a serious, what a sobering event that is to, that is yet to come to pass. Amen? The second coming of Christ. The revelation, the revelation of our Savior, the book of Revelation, the truths that we find in this book. I believe they hold great joy for the believer. Uh, as we as we navigate through this book, uh, there's going to be. Uh, I, I saw. I told you. I, said, I I didn't. I forgot how wonderful, how exciting, what blessings you could get uh, from the Book of Revelation and just getting in these first couple studies. Man, I, I've been just I've been just thrilled. Man, this is exciting. It may, I, I kind of I want to go right into the next one. We don't have time. We'll do it next week. Amen. Uh, but man, what a, what a blessing this has been. It's been fun to get back into the study to go back through it. And uh, we we have a we have a. a great excitement here, a great joy for the believer, but it also forces us to face the reality uh, that there is a there is a, a, a bad day coming for those who have not accepted Christ as Savior. And uh, part of us part of us looks at that uh, for those that have uh, you know done some serious wrong to God's people and things like that. Maybe part of us looks at that in a relief, but I'd say the overwhelming majority of our emotions or our thoughts in this regard is, is heartbroken. You know, there's a lot of wicked people out there. I don't want to see a single drunkard go to hell. There's a lot of wicked people out there. I don't want to see a single <coughs> drug addict, bank robber, murderer, but I don't want to see any of them go to hell. Amen? I want to see them saved. There's a lot of, a lot of people in our neighborhood, good moral people, lost on their way to hell. I don't want to see them go to hell. I don't think you do either. Amen? But... We, we got, I guess we got to go beyond just the intellectual, hey, we don't want to, to really putting some action then uh, to, to what we find in Scripture. If you believe that Jesus is coming back, then we should act upon that belief in our day-to-day -day lives. We live for Christ, live within His boundaries, and we tell everybody we possibly can about Jesus. Amen? Would you stand with me? If you're here today, for some reason you're here, and you've never trusted Jesus to be your personal Savior, then of course I would beg you, I would encourage you, let today be the day where you trust Jesus to be saved. Let today be the day where you believe on Him. Uh, you've heard me say, come to Him in repentant faith. That change in your heart. Amen. I might not be able to fully explain it, but I believe when the Holy Spirit of God brings you out a conviction about your need for Him, uh, He will work out those details of how that heart change takes place. Okay, He's the one that converts. He's the one that changes. He's the one that regenerates. And so if, you, if you're here today, you're not trusting Christ as Savior, let's say the day where you say yes to Jesus. If you're over the internet today, as we live stream as we, as we do, and I, I don't have a clue who's out there watching, 
uh, through the internet. And so if you're over there watching through the internet, you've tuned in today, and you realize the, the, the terror that awaits those that have rejected Christ as Savior, hey, listen, I, you don't have to wait uh, for the day of the Lord. Amen. You can get saved right now. You don't have to wait for that, that moment of terror. You don't have to be scared any longer. You can put your faith and trust in Christ as Savior. Uh, this is not a scare unto a good work salvation. Uh, this, is, this is a reality to help you realize that grace awaits you right now. And who wants to get saved right now? If you've trusted Christ as Savior, though, hope would be a good soul winner. And then hopefully we'd be, we'd be somebody that always is never found without a pocket full of gospel tracts. They've been always, had, always finding a way uh, to break the ice. I was with my wife. We were out to dinner the other day. And I, I, I can't remember what was a, what was a, he had a shirt on or something. And uh, anyway, I started talking about, talking about something with him. And uh, so my wife afterwards, she goes, I know why you did that. Because I didn't care about his shirt. I care about his soul, amen. I figured if I could talk to him about his shirt, kind of break the ice a little bit, I'd have the opportunity to give him a gospel track, amen. I didn't care about his motorcycle or his shirt or any of those things. I just use those opportunities as a way to break the ice a little bit. Uh, so it's not just a complete stranger coming up and saying, here, read this. Uh, and then you get the opportunity to hand that to him and say, hey, man, you know what? Hey, I good chat with you. Read this when you get a chance. Uh, and it tells you how you can know for sure you're going to heaven when you die. And uh, what, a, what a blessing. Hey, let us be looking for opportunity after opportunity to share Christ with the lost uh, in our area, all right? Uh, Miss Jen's going to play here with eyes closed and heads bowed. What's God works in your heart about tonight? You need to make, make your way to an old-fashioned altar. But just take a few moments. Just take a few moments. <laughs> 